It's not easy to get Shashi Kapoor out of his retirement, but this is a special week. The publication of a long pictorial memoir, The Prithvi Walas, which tracks the record of the famous touring theatre company Prithvi Theatres that the late Prithvi Raj Kapoor set up and that tremendous legacy that Shashi and Jennifer Kapoor built upon with the establishment of the Prithvi Theatre in Bombay. Thank you so much for joining NDTV 24-7. Thank you for inviting me. This book is your baby. You've been the inspiration and driving force behind compiling this tremendous record of a theatre movement, a family's commitment. How did it originate? Uh, you see, for years I was thinking of, of doing a, 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 of that, uh, something, uh, something like this should be done. A book like this should be written. I didn't know who would write it because I, I'm not very good at writing, but I'm good at, at remembering things and, and uh, being able to, uh, you know, go into periods which were even before I was born. So I, I, I needed somebody to, to jot down my, my blabberings. So eventually, it was really books that asked me if I should uh, uh, want to do a book with them, for them. So I said, yes, I'd be only too glad, <coughs> provided they, they had a, a writer. They said they'd get a ghostwriter. I said, no, I said, don't get a ghostwriter. I'll speak to the writer, whoever it is, and give that name. So we eventually got hold of Deepa Ghalot. So she was ideal. Viswaraj Kapoor comes across in this book as a very larger-than-life figure. He was. I have not met a single person that comes anywhere near him. Not because he was my father, but even, you know, you know detaching myself as a son, even, even uh, as a member of the Prithvi Theatre, uh, if I just, you know, just look at him, and I have not yet met anybody like that. He was not only strong and tall and handsome and good-looking, I mean, he was, he was like a Greek god when he was young, but he, he had this amazing quality in him and patience in him to, to, to bear, to, to withstand, to accept any kind of calamity, sorrow, pain and not show it on his face. I remember the time when I was not doing well in films and I would be very unhappy because all my films kept on flopping right in the beginning of my career in the early 60s and I'd go to him and I, and I would say, uh, you know, why, why is this happening to me? And he would say, oh, theta, ya, ya, figur ki you know, don't, don't, don't worry about it. He was a terrific guy. One of the uh, most unique features about Prithvi Raj Kapoor, this great star of the 40s, and yet, despite this stardom in film and being sought after by every, every film studio, he really did virtually give it up to establish Prithvi Theatres in 1944. You know, I think Sunil, he, he must have uh, uh, imbibed all that love and, and, and affection and fondness for theatre in during his uh, college days. Of course, besides uh, being good in studies, Papaji was also very good in tennis and football and things like that. I think it was Edward's college, yes. But still it was a very brave and courageous thing to do, to really put his, his reputation as a screen idol on the side and start this travelling repertory, the first professional company in India, and to carry on for 16 long years with this gigantic troop. It's amazing, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, uh, I was of course only six years old when he started the company, so that was my first play, Shakuntala was my first play which he staged. Then he had uh, seven more plays, productions, which were original. The thing that was marvelous about uh, Prithviraj Kapoor was his, besides his fondness for the theatre, he was also very, very fond of uh, the people that worked with him. So it was like an ashram. We had about 100, 150 people there. And, uh, and traveling he, to remote parts yeah, of the country. Yeah, he would go. I mean, can you imagine? He, he, he stayed shows in Nagar Coil in Tamil Nadu. Of course, they didn't understand a word, you know. But uh, uh, he played there. And little did he know that uh, years after that, uh, uh, in 1960, his film Mukhle Azam would do thundering business in Tamil Nadu. It's, it's amazing. And of course, he's doing thundering business now. He would earn from the films and finance the theatre 
and there were times also when he couldn't afford to finance the theatre. That's the time when he approached his sons, who by that time were big stars, Raj Kapoor and Shami Kapoor. What's also unique about uh, Prithvi Raj Kapoor's career and Prithvi Theatre is that he was commissioning his own plays and scripts and plays like Divar and Pesa and Gadar, which were huge hits, were very prescient and had the pulse of the political moment. Social issues. They were. Political events. And that's what gave them their resonance, didn't it? His second play, after Shakuntala, was Divar. In Divar, he had, he foresaw the partition. Can you imagine that? In the first act, he showed a, a family, very happy, very rich, and then suddenly, towards the end of the first act, come few foreigners. The second act is how gradually the foreigners take over the the running of the place, and these two landlords, you know, are corrupted by these people. So it's really an allegorical. It is. It is it's completely allegorical, and uh, this was done in '45. I read in this book that. The reason he called his traveling company Prithvi Theatres, in the plural, was because he hoped that every town in India would one day have a stage and a home uh, for, for traveling companies. I didn't know about this till Zoraji told me, because Zora Segal, one of the members of the old Prithvi Theatres, had had asked Prithvi Raj Kapoor why he named his theater Prithvi Theatres, why not Prithvi Theatres, and he said that I would like, you know, Every, every town and uh, small village to have a small theatre in India, which never happened. Lots of things didn't happen. After his demise, Jennifer and I, we decided that we should do it. And in fact, I forced Jennifer to do it. I bullied her into doing it. And then she did it. But you yourself had a very long and hard apprenticeship at the old Prithi Theatres and then you really slogged through the ranks, didn't you, as stage manager, lighting manager, right. business manager. I don't think I was a business manager, but... Uh, well, but this uh, book has your account book yeah. of every oh, yes, in every yes, town. Yes. I, I mean, I used to keep a, a log book uh, which uh, would put down the house also, how much money we collected. But what were those years of slogging through the Indian countryside, like traveling all the time, learning. We all traveled to the third class bogey. We had several compartments. And uh, my father also traveled with us. He didn't go by air. He didn't go by first class. We all traveled together. I experienced a variety of things which helped me later on. And I'm very proud of that, very happy about it. And not just you, but your brother Raj Kapoor. Everybody else. Shami he did more. We actually. all went through it. Mr. Raj Kapoor, in fact, when the first play started, he didn't have a, an acting part in it. So he, did, he looked after the music, he looked after uh, the sound stage, everything else. One of the great coincidences of your life is that you, it was through Prithi Theatre that you became involved with a parallel English company, Shakespeareana, run by Jeffrey and Laura Kendall, and that's how you met Jennifer Kendall, your future wife, didn't it? Absolutely right. How did that happen? It was in 1956, I still remember, my God. And it was uh, sometime in August, we were touring Calcutta. Calcutta was a very good uh, station for us, because the people in Calcutta uh, really loved the theatre, love it very much. And then Hindi theatre was very good. And to top it all, you know, a theatre with, with, with stars in it, like Prithvi Raj Kapoor and Raj Kapoor and Shami Kapoor and Prem Nath and, and uh, all these people in it. And so they, they would love to. So we had extended our stay at the Empire Theatre, which still exists in, in uh, Calcutta. And uh, I was uh, the assistant stage manager at that time. I was only 18. And uh, though I didn't think I was only 18, I thought I was much older. And, uh, I peeped through the, the curtain, uh, we had a little hole, and it was the prerogative of the uh, assistant stage manager to see how the house was, and whether the audience was packed or not. And I would see one very beautiful looking blue-eyed blonde girl coming every day, day after day, sitting on the same row, 
and with lots of other uh, Angrezi people and I wondered what, you know, why and how she was very beautiful and I thought she was Russian so uh, then I discovered that she belonged to Shakespeareana company who were waiting for us, Prithvi theatres, to clear out, we had extended our stay to clear out so that they could start performing at the Empire Theatre and they were staying very near the Empire Theatre, the Fairlawn Hotel where I stay even now and so I, I convinced my cousin, I didn't have the guts to even approach Jennifer, I was so shy but I, I convinced my cousin Subiraj so he took me to Fairlawn and he introduced me to Jennifer who paid no heed to me <laughs> and we met again after some time in Bombay and that's when it all started and I was in love with her right from the beginning when I saw her but she I think took some time you had parallel careers in film very successful careers in film and really all the profits went into theatre or at least supporting it and helping each other uh, how did this happen when you became a star in the 70s and a top star uh, what was it that led you to repeat your father's example there was a debt to pay for, for all the, the happiness for all the joy I, I received from being in the theatre so I, I treated it as a debt so when he passed away I told Jennifer that we must make pretty theatre and I arranged for the finances and most of them were mine you see your film earnings yes my film earnings and uh, uh, then some film people also helped me in the beginning Amitabh Bachchan helped me for a few shows and Dabu Kapoor, Randeer Kapoor and uh, Rekha, Shabana, uh, Shekhar all these people they came, Sanjeev Kumar, uh, Vinod Khanna they all uh, came and we could collect not much but little money those were the days when we were shy to even charge much money you tell a story in this book saying that at the height of your career in the 70s and 80s at the 80s really uh, you were working four and five, five shifts a day in, in, in the mainline industry and that it really became too much is it a very hard hard driving industry what was it like to be a star it's not the industry it's, it's, it happens automatically once you are very successful it happened to Amitabh Bachchan also but then Amitabh Bachchan realized uh, uh, and then he stopped taking films and in fact he he, uh, he took a sabbatical and he went away and he, he said no for, a, for some time and then he came back into the film but for me I maybe coming from the theatre you know I thought that this is it so you know make the most of it now there were some films which I did uh, uh, free for people who were with, on the stage with me 